walking in another world 20 to 38. You're leaving in three days, right? When exactly? I ask as we finish having breakfast. In the morning, there's a large caravan headed to a town close to the Beast Kingdom. So we're going to be making use of one of the horse passes. Not an escorting quest? It'll cost money, but it's nice to take it easy once in a while. But if the number of escorts decreases on the way somehow, we'll step in. There are a lot of ways to get around. Why don't you come with us too? I better not. I think I'll just be imposing too much if I keep going like this. Don't be afraid to be spoiled by your two big sisters over here. Especially Chris. I look over at Chris and her face is bright red. She's teasing her. That sounds tempting, but number. I'll show you how much I've grown next time I see you. I see. We're going to take it easy for a short time, but what about you? Are you going to accept quests? Yes. I accepted a medicinal herb picking quest yesterday, and was asked if I didn't want to pick more. They practically begged me to do it because the Alchemy Guild and the Chemist Guild have been pressing them. Apparently their inventory is gone because no one has been accepting these quests lately. What a simple soul you are. They told me they'll give me a bonus if I pick a lot, so I'm planning to pick them all day long for two days. And sorry about yesterday, I had something on my mind. No, that's just an excuse, isn't it? I lower my head to Chris and she whispers all right, I'm busy for the next couple of days, I pick medicinal herbs in the morning, have lunch, and practice alchemy, once I'm done with it, I go to the guild, sell materials, and buy magic stones, magic stones can be bought in the guild, but can also be found in general stores in small quantities, they're sold as fuel, for magic items, so the average citizen can buy them. Apparently magic items like the lanterns that adventurers use in dungeons and monster repellent are popular. However, I find out that monster repellent magic items are always in high demand, so they're expensive and hard to find. There's a store that sells them, but the prices are out of my reach for the time being. I ask them if 5 gold coins isn't too expensive, and they tell me it's actually cheap, and so, because of this. Adventurers who don't have a lot of money to spend buy disposable monster repellent. The effect is pretty low compared to a magic item, but I hear there's a lot of demand for those too. I go around some stores looking for magic stones, and I find out through appraisal that the quality of magic stones can vary even if they come from the same type of monster. Also, big doesn't necessarily mean high quality and there are processed and unprocessed ones. Different magic items take magic stones of different sizes and shapes, so there are way more unprocessed magic stones, that people can then have processed to match their magic items. I buy unprocessed high quality magic stones, 50 of them. I also buy 10 lumps of iron ore, leaving me with two silver coins. I'm going to have to make a living with medicinal herb picking for now. Status open. Name. Sora Fujimiya, job, jobless, race, otherworlder, no level, HP, 300 300, MP, 300 300, SP, 300 300, strength.290, plus 1, stamina.290, plus 1, agility.290, plus 1, magic power.290, plus 1, Dexterity.290, plus 1, Luck.290, plus 1, Skill, Walking LV29, Effect, User won't get tired no matter how much they walk, get 1 experience point with each step. Experience points, 18 30,000. Skill points, 7. Skills learned. Appraisal LV8. Appraisal Obstruction LV4. Parallel Thinking LV4, Sword Master LV4, Physical Strengthening LV5, Presence Detection LV8, Natural Recovery Boost LV4, Presence Concealment LV4, Magic Energy Control LV6, Basic Daily Life Magic LV5, Spatial Magic LV4, Alchemy LV5, Cooking LV2. Since my appraisal level has gone up, I decide to check the descriptions of the jobs again, and learn that it's actually possible to change jobs. But it comes with a warning that once I pick a job, 
I'll be unable to change it until walking levels up, so the worst timing would be just after I level up. But in order to increase the success rate of alchemy, I should become an alchemist to receive its correction effect. I can't fail. After all, Rurika and Chris are leaving tomorrow. I pick the alchemist job, and there, plus one, in my stats changes, strength.290, plus zero, stamina.290, plus zero, agility.290, plus zero, magic power.290, plus fifty, dexterity.290, plus fifty, luck.290, plus zero, magic and dexterity have a plus fifty correction, and everything else is gone. Did my MP get the same plus 50? Apparently the affected skills also receive a similar correction in terms of proficiency. I can't help but wish I knew about this sooner, but I didn't know if I could change jobs, so I think I still did the right thing. From now on, I'll be more proactive when it comes to picking jobs. Let's begin. I concentrate, and picture a transmitter. I'll make a magic stone its core and iron or its space. A pendant should do nicely for its actual shape. First, I send magic energy to ten magic stones, and the magic stone in the center that's connected to the others starts changing into a darker color. The other magic stones on the other hand gradually lose their color until they're transparent. They look like glass. When I grab the remaining magic stone, it cracks and turns to dust. Did I put too much magic energy into it? Next. I try to be careful and hold back the amount of magic energy I pump into it. I try to make sure the light that connects the magic stones doesn't break, and make sure not to fill it up too much again. Because I'm doing it more slowly, it takes more than twice as long as the last one. I grab the magic stone, and this time it doesn't break. After using appraisal on it, I see it has become a sorcery stone. Its quality is low. Perhaps because of the low amount of magic energy. I do some image training to remember the feeling of making magic energy flow into it, and its amount. Just as I'm about to start again, I stop, and check my status. After checking my MP, I drink a mana potion. I slap my cheeks and get ready to start again. I don't have to get it right on this one, I have three more chances. I'm going to remember the feeling from before and slowly increase the amount of magic energy. But as a result, my stomach is full, because every time I use alchemy I drink a mana potion. I couldn't drink another one if I had to. Maybe I will after some time passes. I made four sorcery stones in total. Two are low quality, one is average, and one is high. Now I need to picture a transmitter while using iron ore to make the base, and I'll be done. After taking a break, I start working again. If I'm going to use the low quality sorcery stones, I have to use both to make up for their low quality. Maybe I should make a bracelet instead of a pendant. First I use the ore to make a bracelet, then I insert the sorcery stones while sending magic energy into it. And of course, I increase its strength to make sure it doesn't break easily on impact. That's one, and the rest. I should make them pendants. I make the bases and chains and attach sorcery stones, nice, I don't need any other artistic skills, I just have to design them by imagining something I know, this is definitely not plagiarism or anything, but I wonder if they'll recognize them when they see it, I line up the three items I made, and send more magic energy into them, these are made to look like the spirit amulets I heard about before, but rather than having the effect of telling others they're all right, they have a function to search for their location. All right, I'm done. It's like a main telephone and extensions. By sending magic energy to the main pendant, I can find out where the extensions are. If I hand this to them, it will save me the trouble of looking for them. When we can get together again, I just hope they don't throw them away. Good morning. It's almost time to go, but is everything ready? Good morning. Unlike you Sora, we have plenty of experience doing this. So we won't be caught unprepared. But Rurika, you were up late last night checking everything again and he doesn't need to know that. Both laugh, but it feels a bit forced. We eat breakfast like usual, and go back to our rooms. They gather their things and talk to the innkeeper, thanking him for everything and stuff like that. I leave with them, and head to where they're supposed to meet with the others. We walk silently. No one opens their mouth, 
and the atmosphere is kind of heavy. Even Rurika, who is usually very talkative, doesn't say anything. We see some people when we get there. One of the C-ranked parties that did the escorting quest with us is here too. One person notices us, raises his hand, and we do the same. Rurika and Chris. This is kind of embarrassing, but thank you for everything. I feel like if I was alone, I'd still be doing delivery quests in the capital. I came this far, saw all sorts of things and experienced all this thanks to the two of you. W what's that? All of a sudden, we managed to go back to when we were just beginners and remember all sorts of things we had forgotten, so it was a win-win. Yes, it was fun. Perhaps inappropriate, but fun. I think the inappropriate part comes from the fact that they feel like teaching me things was a detour that took time away from seriously looking for Sarah and Eris which is what they should be doing. They'd probably disagree even if I said that's not true. This isn't really a thank you, but I'd be happy if you accepted it. I take out a bracelet and a pendant, and give the bracelet to Rurika, and the pendant to Chris. They don't have the effect of the spirit amulet, but I'd still like you to keep them. You don't have to equip them if they're a bother. Now that I think about it, this is my first time giving a present to a girl. I guess I do have some ulterior motives and in a way, it's all shiny metal. Ah, uh, are they going to say no because they're too heavy? T thank you. Chris goes against my concerns, and bashfully accepts it. She puts it on right away. But why? Are these magic stones? Aren't they expensive? Rurika on the other hand is worried about the cost. Don't worry about it. I made some money picking medicinal herbs. I hope you take good care of it. I'm speaking very quickly and my heart is pounding fast. My hands are sweaty too. Am I more nervous than I think? I think this contradicts what I said in the beginning. But I'm really not calm. Yes, thank you. But are you sure you want to give one to me too? You could have scored some points if you gave only Chris a present, says Rurika, seemingly to hide her embarrassment but without breaking her teasing attitude. I say it's all right again. Are you going to stay in this country for the time being? Aura. There are still many towns I haven't visited. For now, I'm planning on going back to the capital, maybe through a different route because that tiger off was scary. If that's the case, I might as well stop by another town. I get it I get it. Just don't overdo it. Yes. We will do our best to be able to introduce you to our friends next time we meet. Yes, I'll look forward to that, and I'm going to continue working as an adventurer safely and comfortably. Yes yes. Don't overdo it. And don't work too hard. And don't forget to rest. It feels like we could talk forever. We never run out of things to say. But eventually, the time comes to say goodbye. People board horse buses one after the other, and when I look around, I see others saying goodbye, and some people getting a pep talk. Well then, I hope to see you soon. Yes, me too. Both board their horse bus, turn around and wave. I wave back. It silently starts moving. They told me they'd reach the Beast Kingdom of Laith in 20 days. When will we meet again? I need to take care of all sorts of things, to make sure it's as soon as possible. I watch the caravan until it's out of my sight, and walk back to the guild. Report. As we heard, the heroes seem to have no combat experience. Most cannot even keep up with the training in the Cheval Recorder. Most. Master Swordsman. Paladin, and Sword King, while Clumsy, seem to be slowly adapting. Dot and the others? Sorcerer King has the ability to use high output magic, but seems unable to control spells. As for Spirit Mage, no one can use spirit magic, so researchers are currently looking into such books and documents. Dot the Saint? Dot it appears the Saint is learning holy magic with the church, so they cannot be sent to the front lines as they are. It's said that the last time people were summoned, they had a hard time using magic, but could at least grab a sword and fight right after arriving. Dot what should we do? The important thing here is fighting strength, and nothing will be gained if we throw them into battle and they die. Firstly, have them get used to battle. Actually raising their ranks, levels, should come after that. Dot. Dot what about that other thing? Dot it seems he registered with the Adventurer Guild. Dot who? So he can fight? Dot it seems he accepts delivery quests every day, running errands like a child. That one's skill was walking, if I remember correctly. That does make sense. Dot. Keep that one under watch too. 
But don't let him go to another country, and don't let them know about heroes being summoned. Dot. And what if it seems he wants to leave? I don't care if you kill him, just dispose of him. Dot. Report. The commander of the Cheval Recorder has proposed that he take three of them to hunt monsters. So I've heard. How is the saint? Dot. It appears the saint is becoming one of the best in the capital's church. There are rumors that some in the church are conspiring to take the saint to the holy kingdom. This matter is currently under investigation. Dot. Make it so the saint goes along with this hunt, and dispose of the scheming ones as soon as you discover who they are. Dot. Dot. Understood. Dot. What about sorcerer? a king? It would still be difficult to use in actual combat. It appears the power of this skill is too high. Are they scared it would hit them as well? And the spirit mage? Dot the spirit mage appears to have formed a contract with a water spirit. Dot appears, you sound unsure. This report comes straight from the spirit mage, as no one can confirm the existence of this spirit. What has been confirmed, is the ability of the spirit mage to cast spells. Dot there is no need to make them fight but have them go along as well. Just seeing monsters should be somewhat of a change. Dot very well. Dot and that other one? It seems he has accepted a few quests and has gone outside the city. Dot what kind of quests? Medicinal herb picking and goblin hunting. Dot alone? It seems he has accepted quests with adventurers. He became close to. Dot will he be able to fight? It has been reported that he was injured during the goblin hunt. He has been sighted training with a fellow adventurer. But to be quite honest, he is thought to be weaker than a novice knight. Dot and who are these adventurers who accompany him? It seems they come from the Borsh Empire, but are originally from the Republic of Eldo. Dot are they spies? Dot we have received information that they are going to different countries in search of some people. There is the possibility that said people are slaves, as they have been sighted contacting Slavers. Dot be careful. If it looks like he will be going to another country with them. Dispose of them all. Dot report. The hunt has gone without any problems. Dot how did they fight? They seemed lost during the first day, but handled themselves without any issue on the second day. But according to the commander, there were times when they were simply being carried by their power. But it seems they are slowly but surely gaining real combat experience. Dot did their ranks, levels, go up? Some who were low level have been confirmed to be increasing. Dot how did the others react? They felt sick upon seeing corpses of monsters at first, but they seem to be getting used to it. Dot and their abilities? The saint's power is not a problem, but the saint's physical abilities could be, which we believe necessitates an escort. Dot instruct the commander to train the saint as well. If the church objects, tell them it's about self-defense. Dot understood, as for the other two. They are said to always want to use magic. Dot are they anxious to fight? No, rather, it seems they keep checking their magic to see if it works. Once outside, they tried all sorts of things. Dot did they shrink back from using it? Dot at the very least, not when they returned. Dot um. and what about that other one? He took on escorting duties to go with a caravan to the Relay City Physis. Dot escorting. Dot it appears the other two are on their way to the Beast Kingdom of Lath. Dot is that other one following them there? Dot there is no reason to believe he will, at least not for now. Dot don't neglect to be vigilant. I know. Send that. Dot number 13. Any objections? Dot no. Excuse me. Should we continue observing him? Dot maybe we should do something and see how he would react. Dot. I created a legend. What am I talking about? It's been five days, and I've been collecting medicinal herbs every day. At first the receptionist lady was happy, but at this point her face twitches when she sees me. The most I was able to earn in a day was one gold coin. Even the other adventurers in the guild were surprised. I was invited to join a few parties but I respectfully declined. They were pretty smothering. Instead, we went to the guild's tavern, where I bought them drinks and they told me all sorts of adventuring stories. Ten silver coins just flew away with how much we drank. It would have been even more, if the guildmaster didn't show up to send us home. We're gonna miss you around here, Sora. I say goodbye to some adventurers I've become friendly with. As I enter a horseback, I'm guessing the investigation about the Tiger Off isn't over yet, because the horseback going through an alternate route is packed. As the wagon shakes, 
I think about what I'm going to do next. First, I'm going to a city south of the capital called Southgate City Epica. From Epica, there is a road to the capital, but also to the magic state of Ifar and the Holy Kingdom of Friar. The road to the Holy Kingdom is well maintained, but the one to the magic state of Ifar goes over a mountain, so it's tougher. But I guess there must be a lot of rare things there because a lot of merchants go over there. I hear all sorts of things in the wagon. Especially rumors of places I shouldn't go near. I get the feeling I've been hearing a lot about monsters becoming more active. Does that mean there are a lot of hunting quests? Yes. That's fine for big towns with a lot of adventurers, but not so much for smaller villages. The feudal lord can't just abandon villages either, so I hear he's busy dispatching soldiers. If villages are destroyed, that means less income for the territory, but even if soldiers are being dispatched, not every place is equal in terms of priority, and some places are going to be damaged. And soldiers are professionals at fighting other people anyway, not monsters. I heard they suffered a lot of damage when monsters first invaded from the dark forest. That's the forest that stretches north from the capital, right? Yes. In the past there were only simple forts dotted near it. But now there is the fortress city. Apparently S-ranked adventurers are being dispatched too. I go through towns and villages, and reach the Southgate city ten days later. I'm expected to take another five days to reach the capital itself. Southgate city Epica is surrounded by a double-layered wall. There is farmland between the inner and outer walls, and the city is behind the inner wall. If we're only counting the area inside the walls, it's larger than the capital. From the window of the wagon, I see what looks like a wheat field, and dairy farming further in the back. Once I'm done with the procedure to go in, I walk to the guild. I check the quests, and see there are more quests to help with farming than delivery quests. There are hunting quests too, a lot of them to hunt goblins. Some come directly from the villages, and some are regularly posted by the feudal lord. If those are left alone, they're going to keep increasing. And as for medicinal herb picking quests, they exist, but are far from here. If I accept them, I'll have to make the nearest village my base. I ask about inns, and pay to stay in one for five days. I go around collecting information while completing delivery quests, but I'll probably accept other quests if I feel I can do them. I have some leeway when it comes to money, but there are things I want to buy. Status open. Name. Sora Fujimiya, Job, Alchemist, Race, Otherworlder, No Level, HP, 320-320, MP, 320-320, plus 100, SP, 320-320, Strength.310, plus 0, Stamina.310, plus 0, Agility.310, Plus 0. Magic Power. 310. Plus 100. Dexterity. 310. Plus 0. Luck. 310. Plus 0. Skill. Walking LV31. Effect. User won't get tired no matter how much they walk. Get 1 experience point with each step. Experience points. 27,000 and 131,000. Skill points. 5. Skills Learned. Appraisal LV8. Appraisal Obstruction LV5. Parallel Thinking LV4. Sword Master LV4. Physical Strengthening LV5. Presence Detection LV8. Natural Recovery Boost LV5. Presence Concealment LV5. Magic Energy Control LV6. Basic Daily Life Magic LV5. Spatial Magic LV6. Alchemy LV7. Cooking LV3, New, Throw, Shooting LV2, Fire Magic LV2, Water Magic LV1, Throw, Shooting adjusts my aim when I perform a long range attack. Fire Magic lets me use fire spells. It's especially useful to burn monster corpses like goblins. Water Magic lets me use water spells. I have basic daily life magic so I don't really have a use for it now. Am I going to need to use a large amount of water? I learned this because I need to know magic of at least three elements to change jobs to sorcerer. As for throw, shooting, it's because I've leveled up alchemy enough that I can make guns. I tried shooting a few times, 
but I still can't use them in an actual battle. I've never seen a gun or anything like it in this world, so I probably can't use one in front of other people. But I'm not going to hesitate to use it when I'm in danger. Protecting my life comes first but I'm worried about the durability of the guns I can make. Maybe it's because of the ore I used, but after firing a few times in succession, they don't accidentally discharge, but they break. I can reinforce them with magic, but I want to make one with different ore. The gun I have now is the third one. It's my third day of doing delivery quests here. I haven't been to the farmlands outside but I think I've walked all over the inner part. I see Slavas for the first time since I came to this world. I'm thinking about Rurika and Chris too, but I'm also told that buying a slave could be an option if I'm going to keep working solo. They're pretty serious about it too. Apparently it's not that rare for adventurers to form a party by buying slaves, because their scope of activity is pretty narrow when working alone. I learn from the slavers that apparently there are different ranks of slaves. Criminal slaves. The amount of time they have to serve as slaves depends on their sentences. They have to be freed when their sentence is up, so not a lot of individuals buy them. It's mostly people involved in agriculture or mining. There are also people who committed serious crimes and were sent to the front lines of defense of the Dark Forest. War slaves. These are prisoners of war or people who were captured in general. Important people are released if their ransom is paid, but when it comes to regular people, they were having trouble figuring out what to do with them, so they sold them. Debt slaves. Many of these are citizens who didn't pay what they owed or sold themselves for the sake of their families. The terms and conditions for these can be displayed when they are sold. The more favorable the terms are for the buyer, like the inclusion or exclusion of sexual work, the more the slavers pay, because it makes them easier to sell. War slaves and debt slaves don't have a clear liberation date, but it's possible for them to buy themselves back. Of course, if they're employed as assistants to merchants for example, they receive less than half of what regular employees get. Also, even if they're slaves, their buyers are obligated to provide for basic living conditions. They are penalized if they do things like not feed them because they're slaves. If they are hired by adventurers, they have to be able to fight, or at the very least agree to fight. Mostly it's the former, because having someone drag you down is worse than just fighting alone. I ask about the price, and it's well past what I have. Of course. Prices go down depending on the conditions, but it's still not a value one can casually spend. I ask if they have any beast people or elf slaves, and I'm told number. Both men and women are pretty popular, so unless there's a major problem, they're usually sold pretty quickly here in the kingdom. I leave the slavers and head for the guild. There's a heavy mood in the air. Did something happen? I ask an adventurer I know and I'm told a caravan that left for the capital five days ago was destroyed. It was a pretty large-scale caravan, but it also had an escort of over ten people. I remember them passing by us when I first got here. What did it? Apparently it was monsters. A nearby villager who saw it came here to report it on the fastest horse they have. And that's why everyone is gathered here. They're talking about forming a hunting party. This was reported yesterday but they're talking to the survivors to try to get some more information. Is it compulsory? Probably for the adventurers that live here. Although there's probably going to be restrictions in terms of monsters and rank. That's when the guild master shows up. He's a big muscular man. You're all here, and I assume you already know what's going on. All adventurers ranked C and above will be joining this hunt. We will be hunting orcs and it's believed there are at least 30. And the reward? All participants will receive 10 silver coins, with further rewards depending on their performance. Are adventurers below sea rank barred from joining? They can join the hunt if they have experience fighting orcs. But keep in mind that there might be a superior species among them. When will we leave? Early. Tomorrow morning. We will be going by wagon. So bring your own horses if you have them. Things such as food and potions will be provided by us. Any other questions? If not, all participants take care of the formalities. Dismissed. People C ranked and up are processed one after the other, while D ranked adventurers discuss with their parties whether or not to join. Are you going? I'm asked. But since I have no experience fighting orcs, 
I say number. But does that mean the road to the capital is closed? I only reserved a room in the inn until today. Should I get an extension? I work out a plan while I look at the quests. There are a few hunting quests. But are they going to just sit here now that the orcs are making everyone busy? I look for quests that aren't on the way to the capital. And see wolves. There are medicinal herbs near there, and is this a quest to pick magic energy herbs? I'm going to accept the quest to pick magic energy herbs, and hunt wolves if I can. The next day, I see the orc hunting group leave and walk in the opposite direction. I can find magic energy herbs where medicinal herbs grow, but this time I'm going to a place near a village, although it will still take me half a day to get there, that's famous for having a lot of magic energy herbs. Generally speaking, if people go to a regular place to pick herbs, they're lucky if they find one magic energy herb per ten medicinal herbs. That's not true for me. But that probably has a lot to do with the fact that I can use appraisal. I'm not looking for them normally. I walk to the village without rushing, and it takes me about half a day, just as I expected. Usually that would leave someone pretty tired. I had presence detection active as I walked, and sensed about five wolves in the forest. What is your business here? I'm here to pick medicinal herbs. If there is an inn, I'd like to stay there. All right. But don't loiter around the village. If you bother the villagers I'll kick you out. I don't think I'm very welcome here. The inn charges me one copper coin per night, and my room has a bed and a shelf to put my things. The food is pretty plain, just barely above preserved food. People don't talk more than necessary, and I don't exactly feel comfortable here. There's nothing here in the way of entertainment. It just feels like people are trying to live day to day. Are you going to pick medicinal herbs? Don't go around hunting beasts if you find them, because you're screwed if you get attacked. Someone warns me. People do hunt monsters, but it's only when it's decided they are a threat to the village, and the whole village goes out to hunt them. I enter the forest, and the first thing I'm going to do is pick magic energy herbs. I heard all the mana potions were bought for the orc hunt, and that pretty much emptied their stocks. Apparently there are also parties going out to pick magic energy herbs in other places. I finally reach the herbs two hours after entering the forest. It's hard to walk with all the roots in the way. It feels like just walking here and avoiding them would cost people a lot of stamina. The area where medicinal herbs are growing seems pretty narrow, but after checking with appraisal, I see more than half our magic energy herbs. I collect quite a bit, while avoiding the ones that are sprouting, and being careful not to pick too much. Then I take a break, and activate magic. Display map. This is a spell I learned when my spatial magic reached level 6. It displays a map centered around where I am. Its range is small at first, but I can pump magic energy into it to make the map bigger. This also has an automatic mapping feature so it records where I've been. By itself it's not that different from a map in the guild, so I figured this wasn't all that useful, but it really shines if I combine it with other skills. The skill it seems it was pretty much made to be used with is presence detection. By using them together, I can see reactions on the map. If the reaction is in a place not yet recorded by map, it records it, so it's pretty useful. But if there's no response, nothing is registered. Still, Presence detection has an effective range too, so the best way to make sure is just to walk. Five wolves. And is there a beast over there? The reaction is too small to be a monster. I think the wolves are too deep in the forest to harm the village, but should I hunt them? There's no one around, so it might be a good opportunity to test my gun. It's too loud though, so I still need to improve it. I approach my target with presence concealment active. I'm walking while looking at the map, so I have to be careful not to trip on roots. This gives me trouble at first, but parallel thinking conquers it. Skills are so useful, depending on how you use them. I'm getting close to the wolves, but they haven't noticed me yet. I ready my gun while I hold my breath. I feel recoil when I pull the trigger, but thanks to my physical strength stats, the gun barrel doesn't move. But the noise, it sure is loud. I'll have to check how loudly it echoed when I get back to the village, and have a cover story ready if people are talking about it. The bullet I fired hits a wolf in the neck like it was drawn to it. It falls without even having time to shriek. The other wolves are now alerted, 
and raise their heads to look around. One of them meets my gaze, and that's when I pull the trigger. The bullet reaches the wolf faster than it can move, and opens a hole in its brow. By the time I move the muscle to my next target, the remaining wolves are already on the move, hiding behind trees while running over here. When I point the gun, they move to the sides, as though they're avoiding my aim. Do they sense danger on an instinctual level? I can't attack with the gun when they move so fast. Even if I pull the trigger, I can't hit them because they dodge too well. I hide too, and retreat. I need to switch from my gun to my sword. Then I undo presence concealment for a second, and reactivate it. And just as a wolf jumps out from behind a tree, I get close and swing my sword. The wolf looks surprised to see me there, and is taken out in one hit. But because of this, Another wolf jumps at me. I can't swing my sword, so I use it as a shield to block the wolf's attack. The wolf rebounds and lands on its feet, and comes at me again right away. Is it scared of my gun? It keeps doing small steps side to side as it approaches me. I point my sword forward, and don't let its movements fool me. Rurika taught me this, or rather, carved it into me. I kill the wolf's feint while moving as little as possible and instead entice it to attack with a feint of my own. The wolf takes the bait, and I easily dispatch it. There's one wolf left, and I can feel it getting away from here really fast. I'm guessing it sensed the odds were turning increasingly against it. I use map to check it, and eventually the blinking dot that represents the wolf disappears. I take apart the two wolves I shot, although I still can't do it very well. I'm hiding the fact that I have storage magic. So should I buy a magic bag? They're very expensive. Can I make a small one with alchemy? I go back to the medicinal herbs, and decide to camp here today. Part of the reason why I want to camp is to raise the proficiency of my cooking skill. I don't cook for myself when I'm in town. I need to ask in owners to let me use their kitchen, and they don't always like that. And even though they're not exactly local delicacies, there is food in stalls that I can only eat in specific towns. So I end up eating the two. I'm having wolf steak for dinner, and soup made from edible wild herbs I picked on the way here and wolf meat. Having things like soup stock powder can really change a meal while camping. I boil wolf bones and salt them. Then I throw in wild herbs and wolf meat, and boil it again. While managing the fire, I cut the tendons off the steak meat, sprinkle some salt and pepper, and grill. Spices and seasonings are expensive. As I eat this plain tasting soup, I start thinking. I'm feeling relatively comfortable with my life, so I need to think about what's next. I guess food is what's next on the agenda. Just getting to eat good food is enough to fill one's heart. Or at least it should be. And if I can sell it, I won't have to continue working as an adventurer. I can be a traveling merchant if I want to go around to different places. Another thing that's on my mind is this guild card. I carry it with me as a means of identification, but how important is that in this world? I use it to enter towns and villages, and I show it when I accept quests and report that I completed them. But does it contain records of when I used it? Now that I think about it, I saw them holding my guild card over some sort of magic item when I entered some place and showed it to them. They said something about checking if I wasn't a criminal, I think. They didn't do that in the village. I've seen guild employees do something with the card when I accept quests or report that I completed them, but from a skeptical point of view, it looks like they're able to track me. It's fine while I'm here, but when I move to another country. I should probably get another form of identification. I'd be happy if the people of this country just abandoned me because I'm useless and left it at that, but I don't think they're going to give up that easily. I need to deal with that too. I finish eating, and after a short break, switch gears to something else. The tropic at hand now is the fighting I did today. It proved to me that the gun is clearly helpful in battle, but it's not without its problems. It's true that I'm just not used to it but I can't stay calm and use it when the enemy gets near. I guess it can't be helped, since it's supposed to be a long distance weapon anyway. Should I make another one and start using two, or remodel it so it's capable of rapid fire? Obviously I'm not going to aim very well with my non-dominant hand, but I have a skill that corrects it, so I think I should be able to do it if I practice. The other issue is power. The bullets pierce the wolves' bodies, 
But will they do the same with monsters who have tougher skin? I'm particularly thinking about orcs. If they don't work, I can probably work on them to make them tougher and more powerful. But will the gun barrel withstand those without breaking? There are a lot of problems. If I'm going to rework the gun, I'm going to need or used in alchemy too. I spread a sheet on the ground, and sleep wrapped with a robe. There's no rush to get back, so I'm going to spend another day walking around the forest. I use appraisal as I walk around. Today's goal is to look for things that are edible and I can use as ingredients. There are wild herbs but also other things like berries. I find quite a bit once I actually start looking. Some people say nature is a storehouse of food, and I guess they have a point. There are mushrooms too. But I have to make sure to always use appraisal, because some plants are toxic. This one has a component that causes paralysis. Can I use this to make something much like a paralyzing bullet? After camping for another day, I decide to return to the village because I'm running out of space in my item box. The gatekeeper is surprised to see me. It's probably because I told him I was going out to pick medicinal herbs, and he expected me to come back the same day. Did something happen? I lost track of time while I was picking herbs. Then I came across some wolves and got lost. Wolves? Where? North from where I was picking medicinal herbs. There were two of them, so I took them down. But, I see, if you have meat with you, we can buy it. I ate some while I was camping, but I can sell the rest. What about the fur? Don't you think you can get more money for it if you sell it in the guild? It's less to carry, so I don't mind. In return, I'd be thankful if you asked the innkeeper to make a nice meal. Especially if it's something characteristic of this village. Okay, hold on a second, I have to go call someone. I sell the wolf meat and fur I have on me and spend the night in the village. The food has been bumped up a notch, like I requested, and became a little fancier. Although the innkeeper is still silent and doesn't show any sign of wanting to be friendly. For some reason, I also paid half the price for staying here. The gatekeeper tells me it's a reward for taking out the wolves for them. I'm thinking it's less like a reward and more like a token of appreciation. The next day, when I leave, I feel like the gatekeeper's tone is a little softer. Damage caused by monsters is probably a serious problem in this village. I go back to the city, and it's wrapped in a busy atmosphere. Did something happen? I go to the guild to report on my picking quest, and they're really happy. They told me before they didn't have enough magic energy herbs, but the group that went out to hunt the orcs requested more mana potions, so their stocks are pretty much depleted. Did some sort of trouble happen with the hunt? They got ready to go in a hurry, but I remember hearing that they took a lot of supplies. When they got there, they learned that the scope of the orcs is bigger than they thought. Apparently there's a lot of confusion over the two. Are they alright? I hear they were attacked but managed to push them back. But, no, if there's anything else. The guild will announce it. Come back tomorrow morning if you want to know more. I'm told they'll buy medicinal herbs and vitality herbs if I have them too, so I take out some of them. I can't sell potions as they are. As I walk around, I hear rumors about the orcs. A large group went out to hunt them, and merchants are always gathering information, so the townspeople know what's going on too. Merchants who are headed to the capital are obviously troubled because they can't safely cross the path to their destination. I'm sure there are quite a few people who were headed to the capital via the South Gate city because of the Tiger Ulf. I'm in the same boat, although my motives are different. For now, I'll just pay to stay in the inn for one night. The inn is basically empty, probably because so many adventurers are out on a hunt. The next day, I go to the guild early in the morning to try to gather information. If the hunt has no end in sight, I need to accept quests while I'm here. I have enough money to keep going without accepting quests, but having more money is never a problem, and I might buy a slave. When I reach the guild, I see information being displayed. Adventurers crowd around it to look at it, forming a human wall. Seeing as I'm probably not going to be able to catch a glimpse of it for now, I go check out the quests. I get the feeling that the quests related to medicinal herbs are increasing. HN, the rewards are getting higher too. I look at the map, and see the place I went to before is the closest one. Or at least it would be, 
If it was included in the note saying where we can pick herbs, it says the place I went to doesn't have a consistent amount to pick, or maybe too many people went there and it was picked clean. There were a lot of magic energy herbs there, but I get the feeling there were too few medicinal herbs and vitality herbs. While I groan in front of the board with the quests, people are leaving the other side. So I move there. Let's see. We are receiving more information about the scope of the group of orcs. There were reports by multiple people that a superior species was sighted during our first fierce clash, so scouts are currently being sent to confirm this information. It says, the rest is about construction of simple fortresses and defensive bases. It also asks the feudal lord for the support of the cheval recorder. I think they should probably just retreat until the cheval recorder arrives. But maybe they're building defensive positions to distract scouts and stuff like that. H hum. Someone calls out to me as I look at the board. I think it's one of the ladies that works as a receptionist. What is it? Hum. Are you Sora? I am. Thank goodness. Can you come over here? There is something I want to talk to you about. We head to an empty reception desk. So, I have a quest for you. Dot is that what's called a designated quest? I am only rank D. Not really a designated quest, rather, I heard you are a pro when it comes to picking quests, and would like you to accept one. Where did you hear that? Dot adventurers have been talking about it. But then we received a report from the Adventurer Guild Infosys. Is that a good answer? No, wait, does that mean guilds can communicate with each other? If you need them for the hunt, it would be better if you didn't get your hopes up. W.Y. I don't know how much you need, but if you want me to deliver a lot, the places where I can pick them are too far. It would take me a day, no, two, and that's not including the time it would take me to actually pick them. Dot yes. The places where you can pick a lot are far from here. But what if we provided a wagon? That would take less time, but I don't really want to go with other people. A. Why? I want to be able to focus while I pick. That's a lie. I just don't want people to see me pick them. What if someone feels there's something odd about it? If they're willing to provide a wagon, I'm sure they're going to hire more people and have as many as possible picking herbs. So. I can continue to accept picking quests normally. They pay well, so I was going to do it anyway. Dot please wait. I have to talk to my superiors. The receptionist lady gets up in a hurry and disappears to the back. HN. So they're low on medicinal herbs. Wouldn't it be more effective if they just brought them here and I did the picking? But I guess there's also the risk of getting ripped off by the middleman. It's tough. I look outside as the scenery runs past me in the shaking wagon. The sound of a rattling wooden box is the soundtrack of this journey. Riding on the back of the wagon army, five other adventurers, and a wooden box to fill with medicinal herbs. In the driver's seat is the driver and an adventurer guarding him. Do you think the rainy season is almost here? I guess, but I sure hope it waits until we get back. Camping in the rain is no fun. So the concept of rain does exist in this world. Is it just luck that it hasn't rained so far? I'll be spending the night here to do the picking quest. There are several spots to pick medicinal herbs not far from each other, so we'll split up to pick them. Of course, that means I'm picking alone. I made it very clear I wouldn't do it otherwise. That might have left them with a bad impression of me, but it's not even a designated quest anyway. So I have the right to choose. We'll come by here just past noon tomorrow. Make sure you're here. The wagon stops by a tree that's going to serve as a landmark. I jump down and nod. I watch the wagon go until it's out of my sight, and go pick right away. I understand how demanding I'm being, so I need to show results too. It takes me about two hours to walk to the medicinal herbs. This is a grassy plain with good visibility so I'll know right away if something is coming. On the other hand, it also makes it easy to spot me. I activate map and presence detection. It doesn't seem like anyone is near. I walk around the grassy plain with appraisal active. Today I'm going to be picking magic energy herbs and vitality herbs, but mostly focus on medicinal herbs. There are usually more medicinal herbs than the others anyway. So I only have to walk for a bit before I find one. I was told it's all right if I pick by the root. Does it have to do with the rain? Medicinal herbs are plants, so I'm guessing they work the same in this world. 
and grow if they get water. I'm completely focused on picking, and before I know it, the sun has gone down quite a bit. I remember I need to at least find a good place to sleep before it gets dark, so I start looking around. I look for a hollow spot, and find a nice one a bit far from here. They were talking about rain, so I make a simple roof with the sheet and take advantage of the hollow to protect myself from the rain and wind. I've picked about 80% of what I planned to pick, but they said they're going to pay more the more I pick, so I'm going to pick as much as time permits. That said, it's hard to do it after the sun has gone down. The light from basic daily life magic doesn't improve visibility all that much. I could probably do it if I had light magic, but I start a fire, and get to cooking. I pour water on a pot and a kind of portable food specifically made to make soup that I created and prepared yesterday. The bread I have was bought from a store and kept with storage magic, so I take it out and take a bite. It doesn't have the effect to stop time or anything, so I hold it over the fire a bit. That is enough to make a big difference in how it tastes. Then I spread some butter and eat it. I'm done eating, so now I just have to go to sleep. I use purification from basic daily life magic on myself, and get ready to go to sleep. But before I do, I activate map and presence detection. I think I'm fine, because I'm keeping presence detection active, but I use it along with map just to be sure. And then, even though presence detection didn't pick it up, there is a reaction on the map. The blinking light doesn't look stable but a red dot appears on the map from time to time. What is this? This sudden occurrence stops me dead in my tracks. I look at the map for a while, and when I calm down, I stop being so alarmed and try to relax. If someone's watching me, they could also sense that I'm alerted. From what I can see on the map, they're not moving. I stay put for a while, and eventually it disappears. After thinking about what to do, I decide to set up a simple trap. This isn't necessarily to catch whoever is watching, it's more to hinder their approach. I try to make it seem like I'm just looking out for monsters, in a way that doesn't raise any alarms. Now I just have to get parallel thinking working to its fullest while I sleep. A faint sound wakes me up, I guess because I wasn't sleeping very deeply due to the mysterious observer or whatever it was. I call out map again and use presence detection but nothing shows up. But is it because whatever it was isn't there, or because they're just very good at hiding? Was that reaction from yesterday an error? An ominous shade is cast on me, and when I relax and look up, I see the sky is covered with gloomy looking clouds, and it starts to gently rain. I eat breakfast quickly, get my things, and start picking medicinal herbs again. The plan was to pick as much as time permitted but now I'm aiming for the amount I had in mind. I walk around the grassy plain, praying for the rain to not get stronger. I'm in a hurry, but I don't want to get sloppy. If I pick them and they can't be used, it will all be for nothing. As I start to get the feeling it must be around noon, I stop picking. I activate map, but don't see a reaction of the wagon. I think I still have some time, but the rain is getting a little stronger. So I decide to end it here. I go to the tree where I'm supposed to meet them, stretch some rope and use the sheet to make a shelter against the rain near the tree. I get a rock so I don't have to sit directly on the ground, and use it as a chair. I take off the robe, hang it from a branch, and start a fire to warm myself. The robe is waterproof, so I'm not wet, but the temperature is dropping, and I'm feeling a little chilly. I heat up some soup to warm my body from the inside and take a deep breath with my stomach full. While I'm resting, a reaction being displayed on the map gets closer. So you really are here. Did you stop early because of the rain too? Asks the driver of the wagon. Apparently they came back sooner than the appointed time. I don't confirm or deny it, and put my stuff in the wooden box, before retrieving the sheet and rope, and putting on the robe. I enter the wagon and the other adventurers seem exhausted. I'd feel bad making them use their strength to talk, so I just say hello and sit in an empty space. And as if waiting for me to sit, the wagon takes off. I really can't get used to how much it shakes. It's the day after the picking quest. I just finished a delivery quest, so I go back to the inn, and dive on the bed. My head hurts. It's throbbing so I use water magic to dampen a towel and place it on my forehead. It probably doesn't do much, 
but at least it feels like the pain is getting better. This is what I get for having presence detection on without ever turning it off. I figured I was pushing myself too much, but I wanted to raise its proficiency. Proficiency of presence detection is increased by sensing presences. The more I sense, the faster it grows. It grows even faster if I focus the sensitivity on a target, but this time I went over the limit and spent all my SP, and my body is feeling the recoil. That's the state I'm in now. I didn't know about it at the time, but apparently this could have been avoided if I drank stamina potions. I lay down for a while and compose my breathing. As the headache slowly gets better, after taking a sip of water, I check my skills. Presence detection LV Max. I finally raised it to the limit. I'm guessing other skills are also capped at level 10. My breathing is in order, so I try activating presence detection. There's a distinction between stronger and lighter reactions. Do the lighter reactions come from people with the presence concealment skill? That's hard to check from here. I need to check with my own eyes. And then I notice a skill I haven't seen before. New. Magic energy detection. It's what it sounds like. A skill to detect a target's magic energy. How does it differ from presence detection? All I know is that since it appeared when I maxed out presence detection, it must be related to searching for enemies too. I haven't been using skill points, so I have a few saved up. I want to say it will have some sort of use, but I need two skill points to learn it. In the end, I decide to invest those points in learning magic energy detection. I try using it right away and get a reaction. Since it's so low leveled, the effective area is pretty small. It only extends around this in, but I can see bigger and smaller reactions. Is it just a skill to check the amount of magic energy? If it is, I feel like presence detection would be enough. Did I mess up? No number. It's too early to jump to conclusions. I need to actually test it and raise its level. I check my jobs while I'm at it, and see a new one. Scout. I'm guessing it would revise the values of enemy detection skills. I'm going to be working alone a lot for a while, so maybe I'll change jobs. Oh, you're looking better. Are you feeling all right? The innkeeper lady says when I enter the dining hall. She knew. Did I look that bad? I guess I probably did. I think I've been working too much. I'm thinking of taking it easy today. You adventurers sure are busy bees. The others haven't come back from their hunt either. It's really hurting business. She leaves after saying something I don't know is a joke or completely serious. She's talking about the ones that went out to hunt talks. I heard that the cheval recorder is leaving today and taking potions with them. Maybe I'll go watch. I eat and head to the gate. There are a lot of people here. Everyone's eyes are fixated on the knights wearing the same equipment and not moving a muscle. The person I assume is their commander gives the order, and the knights and wagons head out. There are probably about 200 people there. The noise they make when they all move out at once feels like an earthquake, although that's quickly drowned out by cheers. The uproar continues for a while until the knights are out of our sight and everyone disperses. And then, a horse pass enters the city. I stare at it, and see a face I recognize. Oh, Sora. Thanks for coming to greet me here. Ah, Gob. I say without thinking, and he comes close very quickly. I don't want a close-up of a rugged old man. H.N. What? Dot it's been a while, Siphon. Ooh, you look well. We just passed by a bunch of knights. What's happening? You'll learn more about it in the guild, but it's a unit to go hunt orcs. Orcs. I feel like a whole lot of people just left. Apparently there are a lot of them, and even a superior species. A lot of adventurers went too, and the inn I'm staying in is almost empty. Isn't that lucky? Aren't you going? No. One of the conditions is prior experience fighting orcs. Ah, and they're in the direction of the capital so travel there is suspended. Seriously? I guess we should go visit the guild. Goblins grief all gather again and head on to the guild. I don't follow them, and instead walk around. I mostly look around stalls and the local delicacies. Not everything is good, but it's not bad at all. After I finish eating, I go to a weapons store to ask to do maintenance on my equipment and continue walking around while checking the prices of ore. I feel like tools in general are slowly getting more expensive.
probably because the road to the capital is blocked. Potions have gone up 20% too. Orcs, I've never actually seen one. Unlike goblins, they're about 2 meters tall, and while they're muscular, they're also agile. Their skin is tough, and a dull weapon isn't going to put a scratch on them. I want to avoid danger, but part of me also wants to fight. To be more precise, I want to know if I can defeat one. I go to the guild after taking it easy for a day. There are less picking quests. Rewards are going up, so more and more people with nothing else to do are taking them. Hunting quests are the opposite, they're being left here. These are the bread and butter of adventurers and competition over them can be fierce. People come here early in the morning to scramble to take them, and a lot of these people are very hot-blooded. The fact that these quests are still here is a side effect of the orc hunt. There's simply a shortage of hands. There are people like Siphon and the others coming from different places, so it's not like no one can accept them, but I don't know what will happen if this gets dragged out for much longer. Ooh, you're here looking for quests too. Sora, you accepted one, Siphon. You're full of energy right from the start of the day. They arrived yesterday and are already accepting quests. I know this is hypocritical coming from me, but they have too much energy. Nah, not today. Maybe I would have if I was alone. His hearty laugh shows no sign of him being tired from a long journey. They have to resupply, and the other members of his party want to go have a look around because they haven't been here in a long time. So people aren't taking hunting quests, ah, he thinks so too. What are you thinking of accepting, Sora? I'm not very good at hunting quests. If I go somewhere and I encounter monsters, I have no choice, but I don't really want to take the initiative to go out and fight. Safety first. I feel more comfortable fighting monsters I've taken down before. But I don't think I'm going to go out of my way to accept a quest to hunt monsters I've never seen. To be honest, I'm scared. What kind of monsters have you fought so far? Wolves and goblins. I've actually hunted more. But I know those would be hard for me to deal with. And it's not like I was alone anyway. So the gatekeepers for beginners. Things that are relatively easy to fight. Snakes, spiders, bees and stuff like that are harder to deal with. Snakes are blood snakes, spiders are just called spiders, and bees are killer bees. They all have distinctive characteristics, and come with notes on reference books too. Hunting alone is tough, isn't it? Fighting monsters is something you get used to as you get more experience doing it, and if you form a party, you can cover for each other's weaknesses. What about you Siphon? Have you been with this party for a long time? Me and Yano formed a party, and joined in with Jin and the others. There was a joint hunting quest, and we hit it off. Other than that, he points to the guild's board. There's a paper pasted there about recruiting party members. The current members and their skills are written there, and so is the kind of person they're looking for. Is there somewhere to write my own skills? But they're mostly going to work in the place where they're recruiting people, right? It should say their goals too. It says this party here wants to conquer dungeons. It really is there. Most people are low ranked. And then there's this. He's looking at a pathway. There's a training area there. People gather there to test their skills but some end up taking the opportunity to form parties. So it's like a place where people can meet. Are you going to try looking for a party too? I'm fine. I'm not that interested in forming a party for now. That's half true. The other half is that I just don't feel like I'm a part of this place. I've been in this world for around 50 days, but I don't really get the feeling that I'm living here. I feel like I'm in a foreign country, going around looking at the sights. I get it but I can't really wrap my mind around it. I keep thinking that they're going to defeat the Demon King, and then all of a sudden I'll be back in my world. Or I guess it's more like that's what I'm hoping. I'm excited about magic and skills and all that, but the comfort of my daily life just isn't the same. Even though this is very clearly real. When I was with Rurika and Chris, I definitely wanted to be of help. But now that I'm alone, and the more time goes on, the more that resolve is wavering. It's like I got motivated, but as time goes on that enthusiasm is going away. Ooh, you're here too, Geets. I'm done with what I had to do, so I figured I'd do a little exercise. That's perfect. We're gonna help this lost newbie. I'm lost in thought, when suddenly I feel a slap on my shoulder. What? You think too much, and at times like these, 
it's better not to think about anything and move your body instead. Right, Geet, you think too little leader, but you do have a point. Come train with us for a bit. Doing it with the same people all the time gets repetitive. You heard it. Come on. I try to resist them as they forcibly take me away but stop. Maybe it really is a good idea to clear my head and just do some exercise. No one handles a shield better than Geats. Try hitting him first. I'm given a wooden sword, and face Geats. He has a smallish wooden sword and a shield. He drops his stance, and waits for an attack. I try going to the left and right to go around the shield, but he points it at me with minimal movements. I try attacking but he easily dodges and takes advantage of the fact that I've lost my balance to come at me with a counterattack. I have to fall back, and this time swing the sword down hard. There's a dull noise, and the feeling in my hands is like if I just punched a boulder. The shield didn't even budge. His stance is even lower than before, and this time he doesn't counter, probably because he's focusing on defense. Then I try to mix it up by doing strong attacks and not so strong attacks. At first it goes well, I'm able to take advantage of the moment when he stops and manage to attack again, but I'm guessing he's gradually getting used to it, because he changes the way he deals with each blow depending on what kind of blow it is, and counterattacks. I attack, trying to land at least one hit, but it all gets guarded, and the training ends when the wooden sword slips out of my hand. Ever since I trained with Geats, I've been asked to go train every time I show up at the guild. You're not weak, you're actually better than a lot of people on the lower end of the spectrum. You'll become a good attacker if you keep piling on the experience and learning techniques. I feel like Geats saying this has made me accepted by people here. On days when I'm not out of town doing quests, I'm always fighting someone. I get offers to join parties, but I say no, because I'm headed to the capital once that becomes possible again. I've learned something after fighting several people. I never thought about it until this point, but my physical abilities are excellent, at the very least strength, stamina, and agility are all above average. I only lost in an exchange of blows against one person, and he was a muscular guy with treat trunks for arms. If I could see my opponent's status, I could very easily check but even at appraisal level 9, I still can't do that. Will that restriction be lifted when I max out its level? Siphon and his party have been vigorously accepting hunting quests, and we meet and train on their days off. Siphon also trades blows with me, but I'm keeping it a secret that Geats's teachings are actually more helpful. Geats doesn't talk much, but apparently he's known for his skills with the shield. His power of insight is great and he can observe his opponent's movements while blocking their attacks, so people often ask him for his opinions. This goes on for a few days, until eventually the group that went out hunting for orcs returns. The townspeople were eagerly waiting for news about the hunt, and gather in front of the gate to get a glimpse of the heroes. The group can be seen coming this way from far away. Everyone starts cheering, but once they get a better look at them, the cheering suddenly stops and is replaced with perplexed expressions. Everyone is in tatters. I can't help but feel that they look like soldiers who escaped from a losing battle. They don't look elated at all about completing their hunt, and there's a heavy mood in the air as they go through the gate. It looks like their numbers have decreased quite a bit too. I get the feeling that less than half the knights that left are returning. The townspeople are speechless, and watch them in silence. It doesn't feel like the hunt was a success but I also feel like they would be a lot more flurried if the hunt failed and they came back running. I also see what looks like defeated orcs loaded onto the wagons, but it's less than you'd expected from such a large group. The answers I'm looking for come later that night when I'm sitting in the dining hall. Siphon invites me to have dinner with him again, and when we sit down, we're sharing a table with one of the adventurers that participated in the orc hunt. Apparently Siphon knows him and he says they've accepted joint quests a few times. You're here too, Siphon? Yes. I was thinking about coming here from Physis and then heading back to the capital. Have you been working here, Draco? Yes. There's not as many quests here as in the capital, but it's not bad. But more importantly, it's not as cutthroat as the capital. There's less competition over quests here. So, what actually happened? Is there a gag order? There isn't. It's going to be announced by the guild tomorrow anyway. Honestly, 
This isn't the sort of thing we can let people be in the dark about. Siphon waits for Draco to continue while pouring a drink. Draco takes a sip, and says the next phrase like he is spitting it out. There was a demon. A what? The eyes of everyone who was listening are fixated on Draco. Even people sitting at other tables are now looking at him. Confusion, bewilderment, and shock spread throughout the room. You're kidding. It's true. That was a demon. Draco's expression twists with fear, like he's remembering what happened there. Sweat suddenly starts dripping from his forehead. He tries to start speaking, but closes his mouth, like he's hesitant to talk about this. This happens a few times, until he finally starts speaking quietly. It sounds like he wants to put it all out there and forget that fear. They found out about a settlement of orcs deep in the forest. So they were going to assault it along with the knights. The plan was to rescue the hostages and crush every single orc. Since they had A-ranked adventurers and knights, they defeated even the superior species of orc that were present, like the High Orc and Orc General. Even if they suffered some damage, there were only a few orcs left, when he appeared. He came flying out of the clear open sky and glided as he observed what was happening on the surface. An uproar broke out as people started noticing him, and as if waiting for it, he raised his hand. According to a magic user Draco knows, that magic energy felt explosive. Light fell down, and a group of knights were flung away with an explosion. When the dust settled, there was a hole in the ground. It happened again, and a third time, until it was quiet again. His eyes were clearly deep red like blood even from a distance and they sent a chill down everyone's spines. They made people tremble, even if they weren't looking him directly in the eyes, he approached them as if he was strolling, and casually swung his arms. Adventurers who were near were flung, blown away, and it literally started raining blood. Draco doesn't remember the rest very well, he just ran frantically. Before he knew it, he was trembling in the forest, waiting for the noise to stop. The screams were burned into his eardrums and it felt like he could still hear them even after he covered his ears. He doesn't know how long it was, but eventually the noise stopped, and he followed others as they went back to the settlement. He didn't want to go, but felt like he had to at least check how it was. He says that if there is a hell, he saw it. It was horrible. Pieces of flesh splattered around, corpses everywhere. There was a mess of both people and orcs. The adventurers and knights that stayed there said they fought the demon back but in reality, they dealt next to no damage to it. In the end, he said this isn't it and left. The survivors buried the dead, gathered whatever mementos remained, and retrieved orc materials and magic stones as proof that they at least defeated the orcs. They then came back quickly, or rather, ran back. Drago laughed self-deprecatingly as he finished telling us his story. The next day, the guild is wrapped in a heavy mood. A third of the adventurers that went out to hunt talks didn't return. The knights weren't too bad when compared to the adventurers, but many are shaken by the thought of people they knew suddenly being gone. People who choose to be adventurers do so with the knowledge that they're constantly dancing with death, but the fact that it was something as shocking as being trampled by a demon is part of why people are so shaken. Demon. They are said to have appeared in this world at the same time as the Demon King. They are like the Demon King's vanguard. Three years ago someone saw an oracle about the return of the Demon King, and in this world that still only half believes it, this encounter can be said to have solidified the existence of the Demon King. Contrary to everyone else in the guild, I'm going about my business as usual. I decide to accept a hunting quest, in part to test the results of my training. Wolves are the most profitable. Their materials can be sold, and I can use their meat to practice cooking too. They're tasty in two different ways. And since I used a gun last time, this time I'm thinking about using a sword to take them down. But goblins would be better to test the results of my interpersonal training. Although that feels unimportant compared to getting more money. Oh, you're here to accept quests too, Sora? I turn around and see Siphon. I feel like he always shows up even when he's not called. Good morning. I was wondering what happened, since you didn't show up to have breakfast, dot I drank too much last night. Yano got mad at me too. His wife, Yano, is said to be scary when she's mad. At least that's what I heard from Keats. I do remember hearing him say he would be drinking with Draco to console him. And since you're here, 
Are you going to accept a quest too? Yes, hunting quests are really piling up. I'm not going to have peace of mind when I go to the capital unless we at least reduce their number to some extent. So, what are you accepting? Sora, this wolf hunting quest. Aren't you going to challenge something new? Safety first. Then I'll take this one. You're just deciding that on your own? We talked about it yesterday. I'm the leader, but I can't just pick whatever I want. And look at that, it looks like we'll be going together for part of the way. Now that he mentions it, the village that put out the wolf hunting quest is on the way to his quest. Was that a coincidence? No. I think he's just more caring than he looks. That's probably why he's popular. They're happy when I accept the hunting quest. The quests must really be piling up. I have an early lunch, and hop on a wagon. It would take me two days to get there on foot, but this way, I'll reach the village today. We talk about all sorts of things on the way. Siphon and his party want to go to a place called Dungeon Town to make a lot of money and be happy and secure in their old age. It's not just Siphon and Yano either, the other three feel the same way. Jin and Keats said they want their own stores. I'm asked what my aspirations are too, and when I say I want to travel to different countries, they're kind of taken aback, but then they say that means we'll probably meet in the dungeon town. Now that I think about it, the kingdom of Elysia doesn't have any dungeons. We have fun talking until it's time to say goodbye, as the wagon stops at a crossroad. I jump down from the wagon, and don't forget to say thank you. Siphon and the others still have two more days ahead of them before they reach their destination, where apparently they are going to hunt spiders. Yano doesn't like that, but it seems they took the quest anyway because the pay is just too good. I don't think anyone would want to hunt giant spiders. It's so creepy. The path gets narrower for me from this point forward and the pavement is worse compared to the main road. It's not like a wagon would be unable to pass through here, but it wouldn't be comfortable. I reach the village just before the sun goes down. Village. In front of me is a crumbling gate. The gatekeeper shows up after I stand here for a while. What do you want? I feel like I'm asked something like this in every village. Do I really not look like an adventurer? I'm here for the wolf hunting quest. Dot wolf hunting. He seems disappointed. It's not like I said anything wrong. Ah, sorry. I'll take you to the village chief. Follow me. I guess my expression shows what I feel, and he apologizes. Chief, I brought someone who accepted the wolf hunting quest. A middle-aged man appears from the back, looks at me, and then looks around. Are you alone? Yes. I'm Sora, a deranked adventurer. I work alone. Dot I see. Thank you for coming all this way. Lance can tell you more about this. Please take him to Lance. Yes, this way. The gatekeeper takes me to this Lance's house. We've been walking through the village, and I feel like I'm being watched. The village looks like it's in tatters too, but did wolves do this? That house looks like it's slanted. Lance, an adventurer is here about the wolf hunting quest. Ooh, a man comes out with his head and one of his arms wrapped in cloth. Wolf hunting? Do you know about the terrain of this land? It's more or less in my mind. Lance explains it to me in a way that's both easy to understand and correct. It matches what I see in map. I actually feel bad for having him explain it to me. This village. My question is interrupted by the voices of the many men and women surrounding me. Although I saw them coming with map. Are you an adventurer? Please, my daughter. Save my daughter. Please take those things down. Dot my wife was taken. I implore you to bring her back. Are you the only one? Take revenge for. T too close. Their faces are too close. And their eyes are scaring me. It feels like they've gone mad. Calm down, all of you. I'll explain, but know that this is too much for him. Lance, but. He came here to hunt wolves. And he's deranked too, so it's impossible for him. You're basically telling him to go out there and die. But Lance, he glares down another man that's still trying to insist, until he quiets down. This guy is scary. There's so much pressure coming from him. People reluctantly leave. Sorry. Everyone's on edge. What happened? By the looks of things, it looks like the village was attacked. Yes, it happened just the other day. But before we get into it, come to my house. We do have an inn, but it's in no condition to accept guests right now. I take him up on his offer. It happened just the other day. Orcs attacked while men were away from the village 
and women and livestock were taken. We rushed there to try to rescue them, but as you can see, we were beaten back. I'm pretty sure they'll be back too, now that they've got a taste of it, he says, obviously frustrated and clenching his fists. I see, so that's why they all came to ask me. Yes. Do you have experience fighting orcs? Number. And I should say this up front. I don't have a lot of combat experience to begin with. Don't you say that so confidently? Well, it's the truth. I can't help but smile awkwardly. Still, orcs, someone should go put out a quest tomorrow. Yes, you're right. I just don't want them to get their hopes up. Yes, that makes sense. Were there orcs in this area before? There shouldn't be. Even goblins haven't been seen around here for years. I see. They probably wandered here from far away. There's a good chance that they slipped by the adventurers and knights, because it all became so hazy when that demon appeared. Should I hunt the wolves like I planned? Yes. Do that. We have orcs to worry about too, but wolves are still a threat. Ironically, they haven't come close recently because of the orcs. They have a keen sense of smell, so they don't go near a village that smells like orc. Shouldn't you evacuate? You said there's a chance the orcs might be back, right? We thought about that. But we're hesitant because we have a lot of elderly people here. If they're attacked while they're walking away from here, they'd have to use their livestock as a decoy to escape. And orcs aren't the only threat either. You can sleep over there. Sorry it's so cramped, having a roof over my head is enough. I'm treated to a modest meal, and borrow a simple empty room. Status open. Name, Sora Fujimiya. Job, Scout, Race, Otherworlder, No Level. HP. 360-360, MP, 360-360, SP, 360-360, plus 100, Strength.350, plus 0, Stamina.350, plus 0, Agility.350, plus 100, Magic Power.350, plus 0, Dexterity.350, plus 0, Luck.350, plus 100, Skill, Walking LV36, Effect, User won't get tired no matter how much they walk, get 1 experience point with each step, Experience points, 336,000, Skill points, 6, Skills learned, Appraisal LV Max, Appraisal Obstruction LV5, Parallel Thinking LV5, Sword Master LV6, Physical Strengthening LV7, Presence Detection LV Max, Magic Energy Detection LV3, Natural Recovery Boost LV6, Presence Concealment LV6, Throw, Shooting LV3, Magic Energy Control LV7, Basic Daily Life Magic LV6, Fire Magic LV3, Water Magic LV2, Spatial Magic LV7, Alchemy LV7, Cooking LV4, New, People Appraisal LV2, People Appraisal. This new skill became available when Appraisal reached level 10. Although I had to spend 2 skill points to learn it, now I can use Appraisal on people, but since its level is too low, I can only see their name, job, and race. For example, using it on Lance shows, name, Lance, job, hunter, former adventurer, race human. Lance says hunting orcs is too much for me because he's judging it based on his experience as an adventurer. Also, I learned a barrier spell from spatial magic. If I focus only on one side, it creates something like a magic energy shield. I can increase its strength by pumping magic energy into it. But just using it normally consumes a third of my MP. After doing some testing, I learned that by reducing its area, it can even deflect a bullet. It didn't budge when I fired 10 rounds into it, but the shield disappears after it hits its time limit. Also, if I activate it around me, it breaks if it gets hit with one bullet. It still kills the bullet's momentum, so it can at least stop one, but I'm going to have to test it more to see if it can reliably stop one attack. Orcs. I activate map, and see seven wolves where Lance told me they are. 
There's also a place with five reactions of monsters and seven reactions of people. These are the orcs and the kidnapped villagers. I'm surprised to see neither place is very far from the village. Map wouldn't have picked up an unexplored area if it was far. And on the opposite side, away from the village, there is a different reaction. It's still displayed faintly, even with a maxed out skill. I feel like I'll lose track of it if I don't focus but it's definitely there. It's that. The same reaction I saw when I was doing the picking quest. Now I don't lose it if I focus. I have to do something about that too. I feel like I'm being watched. It was like this when I was doing the picking quest, but they're even following me here. I don't know why, but I get an indescribable sense of eeriness from it. But more importantly, orcs being displayed on map overlap with people. Humanoid monsters kidnap females to use as seed beds to increase their numbers. I put away map, as if looking away from it, and try to focus on sleeping. Those seven reactions stay there, like they're burned into the back of my eyelids. Can I ask something? We finish eating, and after doing a lot of thinking, I faced Lance and decide to ask him something. What? Do you know how many orcs are there and how many people were taken? He looks at me with dubious eyes, but I can also see hesitation in them. His expression makes me think there's a conflict going on inside his head. Why are you asking? I'm just curious. I'm sorry if that's insensitive. I was thinking about this yesterday before I fell asleep, but I will hunt the orcs if you can help. No. I think all I can do is draw them away, but I'll help rescue the people they took. This house is too big for one person, and the amount of tableware seems strange too. And above all else, the back and forth between Lance and that other villager yesterday makes me think he's trying to stifle something inside him. If what they said yesterday is bothering you, forget it. That's just what being an adventurer is like. Are you speaking from experience? Dot I am. It's not really about people here. I want to fight talks. Rather, I want to see if I can take them down. Are you saying it's just a test of strength? Is that? I'm not trying to get permission or anything. If you can't do it, I'll ask the people from yesterday. I'm sure they will say yes. Although to be honest, I want Lance to come along if that's possible. All the others who spoke to me yesterday were regular villagers. One of them was a hunter but I doubt he knows a lot about orcs. Not that I know a lot either. Lance stares at me without looking away, and I respond in kind. I don't know how much time passes, but eventually he turns away first. Why are you going that far for complete strangers? Well, I was treated kindly by complete strangers too. And I really do want to fight orcs. If I was asked if I really do want to fight, I would have to say that's half true, if I was completely honest. I feel like it would all come to nothing if I ended up dying. But I think what I'm feeling right now makes sense. Rurika, Siphon, and all the others probably didn't teach me all those things just out of the goodness of their hearts, but still, for someone like me who was fumbling around in this world, their outstretched hands made me happy and helped me a lot. This is just for my own self-satisfaction. Don't worry about it. I say that bluntly and wait for a response. Lance seems indecisive. It's like he's weighing his options as a former adventurer, villager, lover or parent. He seems like a genuinely nice guy with a kind heart. All right. I'll speak to everyone. Great. I can draw the orcs away, but I don't know how many people were taken so you'll have to get the people to rescue them. I actually do know, but I obviously can't explain it. They talk in the village chief's house, and in the end, it's decided that five villagers, Lance included, will be coming along. As for the others, young people who are fast runners will be running to the guild to put out a quest, and the rest will stay in the storehouse. The storehouse is tougher than the other buildings, and has a basement that can be used as a shelter. Please be careful, says the village chief while bowing deeply. We move out with Lance leading the way. They don't know exactly where the orcs are, so we head in the direction where the villagers say they saw the orcs go. After advancing for a while, the forest starts to become thicker. I also pretend to look around for clues, and guide people by pointing to things that might be tracks. Lance looks at all of this like he thinks it's strange. I've been to forests a lot because of picking quests 
so I've gotten into the habit of tracking monsters and beasts without even thinking. I say, and apparently he accepts it. I actually do see some tracks as we head there. Some trees were damaged, probably in a show of force. Wait. There is a clearing up ahead. Wait here while I go check it out. On your own? Are you sure? It's better if no one is holding me back. Lance, you take everyone and hide around here. To be perfectly honest. I feel restricted. It would be bad if they did something wrong. They're all on edge, and I'm worried that something might happen that causes them to lose control. Although that's understandable, since people dear to them were taken. If you move carelessly and are discovered, that will put the people who were kidnapped in danger. If you can't follow directions, you should head back. I warn just in case. Some people look unhappy about some youngster telling them this. But I ignore them and look at Lance. Are you alright? If you do something careless, you might put the others in danger. It looks like he understands, and he nods before prompting everyone to move. I see them go, and move too. I don't see any movement from the orcs. First I have to see what kind of place they're in. I get closer while using presence obstruction, and see one orc standing alone. Is it standing watch? From what I can see using my naked eyes. There's one orc standing in front of a grumbling building. Looking at the building, this place seems relatively big. And behind it is a rocky mountain, so going around and assaulting it would be hard. I need to find a way to lure those five orcs out. Would they come out if I attacked directly from the front? Or would they see the attack, and use the people in there as hostages? This might be kind of a gamble. I don't think I can make this call on my own. So I should go back and talk to the others. I check the terrain and the environment around us and go back, where I meet up with the others and explain the situation quickly. Hostages. Yes, we don't know what the orcs might do. What I can do now, is use an item I have to make a lot of noise. If I use it and the orcs come out, I can show myself and lead them away. If that doesn't work, I have no choice but to just attack. Do you know how many orcs there are? Four or five. I don't think there are more than that. I see. So is this how we're going to do it? Dot how about we watch for a bit and see if they come out? It's almost lunch time, so they might come out to eat. Lance is right. We should avoid danger if possible. But do orcs have meals the same way people do? Dot that I don't know. Alright, we'll take positions and watch. But if they don't move. We have to go with the first idea. Agreed. There aren't any more good ideas, so we have to go with this one, even if it's risky. If we attacked at night, we would have to escape in complete darkness, unless we took down every orc. The others know this too, so although they don't completely agree with my idea, they accept it. Oh, and take this. Use them if you need to. I hand over a bag with recovery potions and stamina potions. Lance is reluctant to accept it at first, but after imagining the condition of the people inside, he takes it. Potions are probably high class items for these villages. Would they be surprised if there were ten of each inside? I came here to hunt wolves, and now I'm fiddling with my gun to try to distract myself from how nervous I am. The first time I hunted wolves. I did it out of necessity, and didn't even have time to think. The first time I fought goblins, I chose to do so, but I also had Rurika and Chris with me. And now, this will be my first time fighting orcs, and sadly, I'm on my own. I'm probably not ready to fight orcs, physically or mentally, but there's no doubt that I'm here right now because I chose to be here. Lance and the others are all where I told them to be. The orcs are moving around inside the building and the one standing watch outside doesn't look happy. It looks irritated. The sun is pretty high in the sky, and I don't think we're going to get anything by waiting any longer. I point my gun towards the sky, and just as I'm about to pull the trigger, map shows me two orcs that appear to be leaving the building. I wait for a bit, and they do come out and approach the other orc. Are they talking to the one standing watch? I watch them for a bit longer. But the other two don't show any sign that they'll come out. Now I just have to get lucky. I pull the trigger, and the sound of the gunshot echoes. The orcs look surprised, and start to look around with caution. I undo my presence concealment and show myself to the orcs, before running towards them with my sword in hand. The orcs let out a threatening war cry, 
which I ignore as I close the distance and swing my sword at the orc in front. The sound of metal clashing against metal echoes, as the orc blocks my sword with its own. I push forward, but it meets me head on. I can't try to beat them with raw power. I can't let myself be overconfident when there's such a big size difference. I push forward again like I'm trying to push the orc back, but then jump back. The orc is now pushing against nothing and pitches forward. I don't let this chance get away, and swing my sword. Despite the timing being perfect, the spear that lunges at me from the side messes up my aim, and I only manage to lightly cut the orc's skin. The other orc attacks from the other side with an axe. Looking at that thick blade makes it clear that facing it head on would be dangerous. I regroup by putting some distance between us, like I'm running away. The orc that was cut composes itself looks at the wound, and howls in anger. Maybe the two remaining orcs heard it, because they come outside too. And as for the people inside, they're all gathered in a corner. I take out a knife and throw it at one of the orcs that just came out. The knife goes straight for its forehead like it's being sucked into it, but the orc repels it like it's swatting a fly. The orc's eyes are all fixated on me glaring at me with anger. Do I have their attention? An orc attacks me right after I threw the knife but I ward it off with my sword. I take a good look at the orcs while being careful about the distance between us. They are all holding different weapons. Sword, spear, axe, club, two-handed sword. Do monsters have strong points and weak points when it comes to weapons too? Also, one of them is a slightly different color. It's a slight difference, and I wouldn't have noticed it if they weren't lined up like this. And when I use appraisal, it classifies all of them as just talks. But I also notice that this one is holding the two-handed sword, and they are coming at me in a shoddy formation that centers on this orc. I repeatedly engage them with my sword and then dodge and flee in an exaggerated way, all to get them as far away from the building as possible. I'm almost there. I move towards stopping two orcs that are getting near and slash at the one holding the axe. The orc was waiting for this and repels my sword making me lose my balance and fall. That's when the one holding the club sees an opportunity to attack. I block it with my sword with one knee on the ground, but receiving a blow like this sends me flying back pretty hard, because I wasn't able to kill the attack's momentum. I rush to my feet and raise my sword, and as I try to compose my rapid breathing, I fearfully look around at the orcs. I look the one holding the two-handed sword in the eyes, and it laughs like it's mocking me. I slowly fall back. You are. I yell, and jump into the forest behind me immediately after. Not a second later, I hear the orcs coming after me, and sure enough, map shows the five orcs are in pursuit. I run, but not so fast that I lose my pursuers. It's hard to control my speed in a way that they don't lose me but also don't catch up with me. With footsteps, howls, and angry roars behind me, I run and run and run. I can see five spots moving towards the building. They met up. That's when I hear the sound of wind being cut, and dive to the ground after sensing danger. A spear passes right where my head was and shakes the tree as it pierces it. That was close. I didn't mean to be careless but it attacked right when my attention was on the map. I run as I try to stay focused, weaving between the trees and using them as shields. I run for five, ten minutes, sometimes showing myself to throw knives as a way to keep provoking them, until I reach the small open area I was running towards. I stand near its edge, ready to jump back into the forest if that becomes necessary. I turn back and wait for the orcs to come out of the forest. I use map to check both the orcs position and Lance and the others. They're heading in the opposite direction, towards the village. The first mission has been accomplished, but it's just getting started for me. I take a deep breath and hold up my sword. I also have my gun ready to be fired at any time. I'm really nervous. Now that I really stop to think about it, those orcs are a head taller than me and have really thick bodies. I tremble just thinking about it, but on the other hand, that means they're bigger targets. I slowly exhale the deep breath I took, and rid my body of any unnecessary tension. 3, 2, 1. The orcs, mad about being made to run around like that, jump out of the forest. When the one in front crosses half the length of this open area, I pull the trigger. It's not even 20 meters away from me. Two gunshots echo, 
and the orc falls to the ground with a thud and an angry expression still on its face. The noise stops, and it's completely quiet. The angry yells, roars, and footsteps are completely gone. The orcs all look at their fellow orc on the ground with surprised expressions. It feels like time has stopped, and I don't let this chance get away. I get close to one of the baffled orcs without making a sound, and plunge my sword into it. This attack from the back with my full weight behind it breaks the orc's skin, rips its flesh, and pierces through its body. It screams, and the eyes that were on the fallen orc turn this way. I quickly pull my sword and get away. The orc's body is now supported by nothing, and gravity takes over as it sends it crashing to the ground. That's two down. The scornful attitude of the orcs, like they were ridiculing and harassing something weaker, is gone completely. Now they look like they're ready to fight. They drop their stances and ready their weapons. The three orcs keep some distance between each other, so as not to get in each other's way when they swing at their prey. This is where it really starts. As I face them. I start thinking, they're going to be waiting for the move I already used, so I have to pick the right time to use it. I can't get cocky. The difference in numbers is a threat in itself, and the longer this battle drags on, the more the gap in our stamina is going to matter, so I need to keep this short. I can only win a pure physical contest when it comes to walking. I use parallel thinking to gather my thoughts and ready a spell, a fire spell. The remaining orcs are holding a sword an axe, and a two-handed sword. The one holding the axe seems like it would be the easiest to kill. Its handling of its weapon seems a bit slower, and the burden of its weapon makes me want to take it down before the others too. I face the one holding a sword and attack. At the same time, I try to move around and use it as a shield to keep the others from attacking. Constantly moving around puts a burden on my stamina, but I have to do it to keep the fight one on one. This works for a while. But then, the orc's movement changes. The other two spread out to the sides, and charge forward. I attack the orc in front of me, and could use the momentum of the attack to dodge by its side, but I really don't think it would let me get away with it. However, this is an opportunity. I grab a knife I have on my waist and throw it forward. At the same time, I change direction and run towards the axe-wielding orc. It stops and gets ready to intercept me, but I raise my sword. And as I get closer, I shoot out my spell. Fire arrow. The arrow of fire shot out at close range hits the orc right in the face. Maybe it's because its level is too low, or maybe it's because I'm not used to using it, but it's not enough to take the orc down. But it does succeed in making the orc lose its balance, and I swing down at it with my sword. The sword slashes its neck with little resistance. I thought the wound was too shallow, but blood starts gushing. Its body shakes, and it falls to the ground. I leave it behind me as I turn around and waste no time moving on. The orcs just happen to be lined up here, so I close the distance between us, and cross swords with the one in front. It swings down its sword, I ward it off with minimal movements, and use the momentum to use a skill I haven't had the chance to really use before. Sword Rush. This is a sword technique I learned as Sword Master leveled up. It increases the speed of my sword, and more than doubles its power. The tip of my sword pierces the orc's torso and goes in without much resistance. The blood stains my robe, and as I swing it off my sword, the skill's effect runs out. At the same time, I feel like my strength is leaving my body. Probably because I used a lot of SP. Because of this, I'm slow to react. The remaining orc approaches me without me even realizing it, and swings its two-handed sword at me with such force that it would destroy even a fellow orc. I don't evade in time. I use sword rush again, although my position means it's not as fast as before. But that should still mean I'll just barely make it. My sword borrows power from the skill and jumps at the orc's sword, and as they clash violently, the tip of my sword breaks, but I at least succeed in changing its trajectory. The orc's sword passes by me and sticks to the ground. I run away, almost like I'm falling over. My body isn't moving the way I wanted to anymore. I check my status, and see my SP is at zero. I face the orc again, as it swings its sword horizontally. As I look up at its face, I see it smiling, completely confident in its victory. I take my gun out of the item box, 
and activate a barrier to protect myself from the incoming slash. The barrier manages to deflect the two-handed sword, and the orc's face is painted with shock. Since the shield is transparent, only its user knows it's there. I pull the trigger multiple times, firing every bullet. The orc looks like it can't believe what just happened and after it slowly falls, it doesn't move again. I take out a mana potion and a stamina potion from my item box and drink both. They still taste like bitter tea. It's not like their taste is really bad, but I wouldn't drink them just because I want to either. But they do work. The languid feeling in my body is going away. Can I rework them so they taste like juice? I use purification to get rid of the lingering bitter taste in my mouth. Although I kind of feel like it's a waste of magic. As I think about this, I turn around, and see a person standing there. That person seems to be standing normally, but there are no gaps in his posture. Is he on guard? We're a bit far from each other. Who are you? If this person isn't attacking me, I can only assume he's here to talk. Probably. But what is that outfit? It's completely black, with a mask covering his eyes. What is it? A ninja. This person is also about two heads shorter than me. Dot number 13. Otherworld Asura. Your strength has been confirmed. Have orders to take you. Dot have you been watching me? Why? Don't know. I was only told to take you if you acquired power. I only hunted monsters. Any adventurer can do that. Dot you hunted five orcs alone. Not everyone can do that. This voice sounds so plain and unemotional. Almost like a machine. Dot confirmed use of unreported magic. What if I refuse? Dot you will come. Refusal is not an option. I see his body tremble, and suddenly approaching me with an incredible speed. This person has a knife in hand, and when I jump back, the distance is instantly closed again. When I take my gun and point it, my target jumps back diagonally as if running away from the muzzle. Does that mean my opponent knows what this does? We are about 30 meters apart and he is now observing me while keeping that distance. It's a happy misunderstanding that he is being cautious, but this gun doesn't have any bullets left. I get the feeling that it's all over if he notices this, but that's not my main concern. I put the gun in the item box, and pick up the sword an orc was using. I try swinging it lightly, and it doesn't feel heavy, so I hold it as I face my opponent. Sorry but I don't want to go back there. You people abandoned me in the first place, and now you're telling me to go back because I've gotten stronger? What kind of joke is this? This provocation leads me to close the distance between us myself. What I really want to avoid here is letting them get away. He's alone right now, but it would be a big problem if word got out and more came. I need to make sure to finish this here. I swing my sword down and it's easily avoided. I don't even have time to breathe before a counterattack comes. There isn't a single wasted movement in his step. He uses his flexibility to its full advantage to slowly pile on the damage. None of the attacks are fatal, but my skin is cut and blood starts dripping. Did I pick the wrong weapon? Then again, the sword is what I'm most familiar with. Even if I used a knife, the difference in skill and experience would be clear. I thought I couldn't let them get away. But at this rate, I can't get away. I slash and use fire arrow multiple times, but it's all evaded, so I fall back to try to put distance between us again. I try going for a feint, but it doesn't work, and just as I'm getting ready to go at it again, the sword slips out of my hand. What? I try to pick it up, but it's then that I notice my body isn't moving too well. My senses. No, my hand is getting numb. I feel eyes are locked on me so I raise my head. He shouldn't be able to see me through that mask, but I feel like I'm being watched. I use appraisal and look at the knife. I see. I take out a potion from the item box, but a knife is immediately thrown at it and breaks it. I try to dodge, but my body isn't moving how I want it to. The numbness is getting worse, but strangely enough, my opponent isn't coming near me. Is it because he knows he just has to wait until I can't move at all? No no number. This is really bad. I chant status open in my head, and see the status ailment paralysis. Drinking that mana potion restored some of my MP, but not enough for me to be able to deploy a magic barrier. It looks like it will take a while for natural recovery to do something about this too. What do I do? I'm looking at my opponent while checking the status panel. Are there any skills that might help? I search as I try not to panic. No, 
Nope, not this one, no. But wait, I found something. Status ailment resistance grants resistance towards status ailments, and its effect improves as it levels up. Is this the one? I don't see anything else that might work, but I don't know for sure if it will help resist this paralysis. I hesitate for a second, before deciding to learn it. I have five skill points left. Skill, status ailment resistance OV1. Effect, resistance against poison. This is no good. I use more points, leaving me with three. Skill. Status ailment resistance cell V2. Effect, poison nullification. Still no good. That's not what I want right now. I use more points, leaving me with zero. Skill, status ailment resistance cell V3. Effect, poison nullification and resistance to paralysis. I feel the numbness in my body getting better, and see the proficiency increasing. I test my grip, and pick up the sword. Then I get up again. Looking like even this is difficult for me. I ready my sword while breathing rapidly and staggering as I slowly walk. This is acting. Not bad if I may say so myself, but will it work? I get closer, one step at a time, and number 13 hasn't dropped his guard, and is still holding that knife. When I get close enough, I lift the sword with all my strength, and activate sword rush. As I slash down. The sword goes flying halfway through. My eyes follow the sword in disbelief, and my opponent takes the opportunity to slash at me, but I move my hand towards the knife and grab that wrist, before putting all my strength into my hand like I'm going to crush that wrist. We're evenly matched when it comes to speed, but I have the upper hand when it comes to strength. This is the decisive moment, as number 13 looks shaken. I put all my weight into pushing him down. His mouth twists with pain, and he struggles to try to escape, but I won't let that happen, and keep pushing. But then, the still active appraisal skill picks something up. Slave mask. Wearer is robbed of free will, creating a doll that follows orders. Physical abilities are dramatically increased. It takes my attention for a bit, before I turn to my opponent again. This person is small and slender. I can't tell his expression because of the mask. But his nose, mouth, and skin all look pretty young now that I look at them closely. Is this actually a kid? People appraisal won't show me ages. I struggle to decide what to do now. We were fighting as enemies, but I don't think I can kill. This didn't happen when I was fighting monsters. I guess it's because now I'm fighting another person. Do I take off that mask? Destroy it? The noise brought me here, but this is quite a scene. A voice coming from behind me interrupts my thoughts. I was so focused on number 13 that I didn't notice someone else approaching. I turn around and see blood red eyes, two horns, and bat like wings, all belonging to someone who looks very calm. Dot it's a demon. Right away, my focus is drawn completely to this demon, but someone else sees this moment as an opportunity. Number 13 feels my grip loosening and escapes. By the time I notice it's happening, it's already too late. I can't help but regret letting him escape, but that problem over the takes precedence. I try to act natural as I turn to face them. To my left is a demon, and to my right is number 13. If we drew lines from our positions, they would make a triangle. A slave mask? Humans never change. The demon says with cold eyes that look like they're looking at garbage. Those words make me tremble as they are spat out. But your existence is a bigger problem. Isn't it, Otherworlder? The demon's eyes aren't moving. It's not like they're glaring at me, or anything, but those eyes make me shrink back. I need to get a grip. How do you know what I am? In a way, isn't it convenient that an underling of the Demon King appeared right in front of me? If we can talk, that is. I've already heard from people who experienced it firsthand just how menacing a demon can be. There's no way I stand a chance if I were to fight him right now. HMPH, I can tell by your skills. Do you understand what that means? Now I will ask a question. What are you doing here? Hunting orcs. And then that attacked me. I say while pointing at number 13. Hunting? That answer just invites more questions. Is that a reason to leave another worlder alone in a place like this? I can tell the demon really doesn't understand. Why do you feel that way? Other worlders are weapons to kill the demon king correct? I struggled to understand the thought process of today's kings, 
if they send one to be wasted in a random place like this. Although I guess that's convenient for me. The demon happily laughs. But wait. Do other worlders have some sort of skill that works well against the demon king? To be perfectly honest, I think high ranking adventurers are stronger than me. I don't think I can even beat C ranked adventurers. Then again, the others probably can. Unfortunately, while I'm another worlder, I'm so weak that I was discarded the same day I was summoned. Honestly, all I feel is irritation towards those people, and I have no intention of letting them tell me what to do. So if you could just turn a blind eye to me, I'd really appreciate it. Dot that's an interesting story, but I'm obviously not going to take it at face value. Humans are a treacherous species that hurt and lie with no issue. I can't argue with that. It's the same in this world and mine. Very few people are not selfish and don't put themselves before others. Aren't you going to argue? I think it's true. But the best course of action would be to eliminate an uncertain, but dangerous element. Wouldn't it be best to execute you here? Overwhelming bloodlust is being released. I feel like I would pass out if I took it head on but I managed to just barely brace myself for it. But then, something happens that neither I or the demon saw coming. Number 13 reacts to the bloodlust, and suddenly attacks the demon. The demon is taken completely by surprise and attacked from a perfectly blind spot, although I can still see it. The timing couldn't be more perfect, and yet, the attack is blocked with one arm wave without the demon even needing to turn around. First you fight. Then you protect? I'm really struggling to understand your actions. Number 13 bounces back and flies like a ball. He then rolls around on the ground, but immediately gets back up when the momentum dies down. Executing orders. That is to be taken back. Anyone in the way is to be removed. Dot can't you even understand the power of your opponent? You really are nothing more than a doll. I should just break you here. The demon has a new target but I don't think I can run away. If I'm attacked, I'm dead. I would just be slightly prolonging the time until my death. I look around, looking for a weapon, and see number 13's knife. I move when number 13 moves, pick up the knife, and then throw it. The knife flies toward number 13, obstructing his move. Who are you going to get in my way? To help an enemy no less. The demon was definitely headed for the kill. Number 13 would certainly be dead right now if I did nothing. I want to ask that person some things if I can. That slave mask for example. Is it possible to liberate someone from that? HMPH. What would I gain from that? And you're both going to die anyway. So what's the point? There's no point because we're going to die. I feel like I'm at a crossroads of life. And if I choose the wrong path, there's no future for me. I swallow, and the gulping noise echoes in my head. In this world, no, can you use enslavement magic? Enslavement magic? No, but can you use something similar, like something that stops people from betraying you, or causing harm to you? Dot I do have something like that. Then, if there's a chance, I have to grasp it. It's all over if I die. Put restrictions on me. The demon stares at me with probing eyes, and I look straight ahead without averting my eyes. Sound stops. Time stops. There's a tense air around us. Every minute, every second feels long. I don't even know how long I wait, but eventually the demon's mouth opens. Dot interesting. Why are you willing to go that far? Because I can't accept being brought into this weird world and having my life end in such a nonsensical way. No. What I feel now is different from what I felt when I was expelled. No, I want to go around and see this world that's new to me. Things like the culture and scenery in general of this world are so different from mine's. And obviously, I just don't want to die. So if you spare me, I'll obey you, at least to a certain extent. That's pretty much how I actually feel. But I want to say no to things I really object if I can. That's important. Those probing eyes are still watching me. Dot fine. If you accept a restrictive curse, I will let you live. Is this what they call a deal with the devil? 